Could it be that we're wearing our sunglasses all wrong? And that wearing our sunglasses at the wrong time of the day and in the wrong places is ruining our sleep and might even be causing cancer? Ushers are gonna pass out some sunglasses to everyone in the first two rows. These are blue light blocking sleep sunglasses. And I would like you to put those on during this presentation. What if I told you that we all should be wearing our sunglasses indoors and at night? And that by doing so, we reduced our risk for cancer and macular degeneration and improve our sleep. And the fact is that most of us need more sleep these days. The Center for Disease Control says that a third of Americans, that's over 100 million of us, are not getting enough sleep. 68% of us report having trouble falling asleep at least once during the week. And even those lucky people sleeping the recommended seven to nine hours a night often report waking up feeling tired and groggy. And that was me. I would read a book before bed and spend the next two hours struggling to get to sleep. Seven hours later, I'd wake up to my blaring alarm clock, wondering why I was still so tired. I would have paid good money for something that would guarantee I could fall asleep quickly and wake up refreshed. And I'm not alone. Americans spend over $41 billion a year on sleep aids. But the research shows that sedated sleep is no better for us than poor sleep. We're doing this all wrong. And it turns out that I and many people that struggle with sleep are missing out on the most important benefits of sleep. You see, the benefits of sleep are thought to come from the hormone melatonin. Our body produces melatonin shortly after sunset. This is called our circadian rhythm, and it's based on the light and dark cycles of the Earth. Melatonin helps us fall asleep at night, and it's a potent anti-cancer agent. If we don't receive the right light and dark signals, our body doesn't produce the right hormones to help us wake up for the day or get ready for bed. Disruption of our circadian rhythm causes health problems. And exposure to light at night stops our body's production of melatonin. We then lose those benefits associated with melatonin. We have trouble falling asleep. We wake up tired and groggy. We don't perform as well at work the next day. We become frustrated and angry much more easily. And we've just increased our risk for cancer. In fact, women who work at night are at an increased risk for breast cancer. And men who work at night are at an increased risk for prostate cancer. And those are just the only two cancers that they've studied so far. Now what's really interesting is it's not just any light at night that stops melatonin production. Firelight, what we would have been exposed to for all of human history, does not disrupt melatonin but the blue frequency of light. That present in our modern energy efficient lighting, like LEDs, like these blue LEDs, our devices and our televisions all contain large amounts of blue light. And that disrupts our biology. So while energy efficient light is great and it saves us money, and our devices are based on LEDs, our televisions are based on LEDs, that has a dark side, too much blue light that disrupts our circadian rhythm. So when we read ourselves to sleep, or watch a movie before bed, or message on our phones late into the night, we're making it harder to go to sleep, and we're harming our health. Lighting up our homes, our offices, and our cities with this artificial light after dark as if it were daylight is not in sync with the way our biology works. 
In fact, the American Medical Association recently issued a warning letter against replacing streetlights with LED lights because of their association with health impacts. Both Harvard Medical School and the National Institute of Health have recently published papers linking light exposure at night to cancer and other health impacts. I want you to think about that the next time you turn on a light in the middle of the night to get up and use the bathroom. Even that brief exposure to light signals to your brain that it's daytime and begins to reduce or eliminate your body's production of melatonin. You've just disrupted your circadian rhythm. And guess what? It's not just at night that this blue light is a problem. Because we now spend over 90% of our time indoors under artificial lighting and staring into screens, we are now chronically exposed to blue light. And while it's true that if we were outdoors under full spectrum sunlight, we would see blue light. But the sun also has numerous other frequencies of light, including the healing frequencies of red and infrared. So if your office or your kid's school looks like this, with lots of artificial light, that's a problem. In fact, researchers think all this chronic blue light is harming our eyes. A recent study published in the Journal of Molecular Vision says that exposure to blue light can cause macular degeneration and eventual blindness after enough exposure. I think about that every single time my five-year-old picks up the iPad. And I've started to think about artificial light the same way I think about processed junk food. We all know a whole food diet is far superior to a diet high in processed junk food, which is too high in things that can harm us, like sugar and refined flours, and largely devoid of the things that benefit us, like vitamins and minerals and fiber. And eating a diet high in processed food is linked with increased risk for disease. Well, so too is bathing ourselves in too much processed light. You see, artificial light is really just processed sunlight. It contains only a fraction of the total light that natural sunlight contains. It's too high in those frequencies of light that can harm us, and it's devoid of those frequencies of light that can benefit us. So why don't we know about any of this? Well, for one, it's new. The study of light's effect on the human body and circadian rhythm is cutting edge new science. In fact, the term circadian disruption was only recently coined. We've only installed LED and CFL lights in the last decade or so. And our use of devices everywhere and all the time is only now becoming a true reality. Now, even though it's new, we're still seeing hundreds to thousands of research papers published every single year about the effect of light on the human body. It is real, and we need to do something about it. So what can we do to protect ourselves, and what do sunglasses have to do with it? First, get outside as soon as possible after the sun rises. Full spectrum sunlight early in the morning without sunglasses, without glasses, and without contacts has been shown to set your circadian rhythm for the day and improve your sleep that night. Second, artificial light stops the production of melatonin. Firelight does not. We all need to go back to lighting with candles at night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one, since no one's going to do that, wear your sunglasses at night. Blue light blocking sunglasses like these Swannies stop the melatonin robbing blue light from ever entering your eye. You can now read a book or wind down with your favorite television show before bed without worrying about ruining your sleep. Since learning all this, I wear my sunglasses every single night, whether I'm traveling or taking a jujitsu class. And in fact, my sleep has improved so much that I have not had to wake up to that blaring alarm clock in the last three years. Finally, if you work indoors under artificial light or stare into a screen for a living, 
install blue light blocking apps on your devices that remove the most harmful frequencies of blue light from coming off the screens. And wear a pair of blue light blocking glasses to stop that blue light coming from other sources. We're wearing our sunglasses all wrong. To optimize our health and improve our sleep, take your sunglasses off outdoors and during the day. And let's wear our sunglasses indoors and at night. <laughs>